This video is about uh, working with transfer functions in, in Drishti. Now this is a tooth data set and uh, I am pressing F2 to move to high res here. Now I will just drag this transfer function editor window make it bigger. Now using shift and left mouse button I am changing the size of this spine uh, here and then another one here now the histogram here that we see <coughs> is called as a 2D histogram and this is what is called as 1D histogram. I am pressing spacebar to remove these markers here at these ends and pressing G to remove the grid overlay. Now this is the 1D histogram here. So there is a phase here, there is a tiny line here, then there is a big chunk here and there is chunk here and there is tiny chunk here. So there are four phases in this data set this is one, this is another one, this is yet another one and this is the last one. So there are four phases in the data set and 2D transfer, transfer function shows us the relationships between these phases. Now if you look at 1D histogram then you know that there are four phases but it is really hard to know what is the relationship between these data, uh, between these phases. <coughs> now, by relationship, I mean what phases are close to what other phases. Now, these are the arches. These these arches have been created because we are using value that is voxel intensity or voxel value here on the horizontal axis and gradient magnitude on the vertical axis. So at every voxel I evaluate uh, uh, gradient magnitude. Now gradient magnitude is essentially uh, telling us how fast the values are changing in the neighborhood of a given voxel. Now if your values are changing fast meaning there is a lot of difference between the neighboring voxels and the voxel under consideration then your gradient value, the gradient magnitude is going to be higher compared to if you look at the voxels that are in a homogeneous region. Now if the voxels are in a homogeneous region or very or in a region where there is not much change then the gradient magnitude is going to be very low or close to zero. Now these arches, these arches show us how the um, gradient uh, how the value is changing uh, in the neighborhood of the voxels. Now if you look at this one here, this range, now what this is telling us is there is a phase here. Now the voxels that are in this range have pretty low magnitude, uh, gradient magnitude, which means that they are, they are in a homogeneous region. This phase here and this region here show, tells us that this is another phase and the voxels in this region have low magnitude. Now this arch here tells us that voxels in this phase are lying close to voxels uh, in this phase. So there is a boundary between this voxel here, this set of voxels here and this set of voxels here. Now as we go from one homogeneous region to another homogeneous region, when we start say uh, going uh, from one homogeneous region, your uh, gradient magnitudes will start rising as you approach the boundary and at the boundary you are going to have the highest gradient magnitude and then we go into the, the second phase and the gradient magnitudes will start going down till we reach the uh, the homogeneous region. Now let us reduce the uh, bring this 
top bit down here I am using shift key and left mouse button so that I move vertically so even if I move my mouse anywhere this point will only move vertically and using middle mouse button I can move the entire spine around now if you look at this <coughs> image here I am selecting just the interface between this region here and this another homogeneous region here and I am looking at the interface of that and that's why we get this region here now this arch here is an interface between this phase and the last phase so if I move my uh, my transfer function to just catch the arch then I am going to get the boundary between the air phase which is this phase here and this high density region so let me show you this this is the air phase here and then the high density region is that and we are catching the interface between the high density region and the air phase. Now there is another boundary here between this phase here let me just bring that down this phase here and the high density one so this is the boundary between the middle density phase and the high density phase we can also move that so I am catching this boundary here we can catch another boundary here <coughs> and that's the root of the of the teeth so that's that's the root of the teeth and this is the boundary between one phase uh, root and this phase here that's the boundary between that because this arch is going from here into this phase here so we have four arches this is one arch this is second arch third arch and fourth arch and these arches give us the boundaries between the phases and they also give us the the relationship between various phases in the in the data so there is also a tiny arch here and there's some values here now let us just show the interfaces so this is one interface now I'm using shift key and left mouse button to increase the the size of this widget now if you observe closely when we have a uh, when the size of this uh, backbone here uh, the spine here is smaller you get a very sharp edge for your surface and when I increase that you get a very hazy uh, boundary for your surface so depending upon your needs you can have a sharp or a, or a hazy hazy boundary so this is one boundary I'm using shift key, key and the left mouse button to to show another boundary this is another boundary I'm just tilting the transfer function to catch it nicely here now we are also invading other boundary because there is an arch which goes from this phase here root to the last uh, to the middle phase here so we are also catching that boundary here let's add one more transfer function this is TF2 and let's catch this boundary here let us change the color now I'm hovering over the color uh, opacity um, widget pressing space bar to get some standard uh, color widgets now let's check red right here so this is another interface that I have caught and then the last interface 
this is the last last interface so this way we can easily get the boundaries between different phases of the data